All right. Hey, 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 it's an impromptu, just a uh, quick little get together after the derby. Thanks for uh, stopping by. And uh, I figure, you know, it's good to uh, be home for a Saturday night. And uh, so waiting on the computer to get back, unfortunately, uh, hopefully to have that back in the next, um, I'd say, uh, well, it depends. They told me that they, I've got parts that they had to order for repair, so I'm, I'm trying to get them to let me know if they're coming from China or if, you know, what the deal is with that. But once I get the machine back, uh, video and lighting and stuff will be a lot better um, using the computer. That's why there's a little glare next to me here. But uh, I figure, well, it's nice Saturday. Might as well uh, have a dram or two while I'm just, you know, kicking back. Got the old whiskey fist glass from that uh, DC thing. Pretty nice. Uh, I like. Uh, can always use an extra Glen Karen. And uh, I figured tonight we'll start off with a uh, Glen Grant tin, and uh, take a look at that, and then maybe get into a um, Tamdu uh, batch 001. But it's the. Uh, let's see here. Let me get the bottles. Uh, sorry about that. The uh, first one is the Glen Grant. It's a 10 year old, it's 40% ABV, so it's a little uh, low on the ABV, unfortunately. It most likely has color and is chill filtered, so. But it's a very cheap uh, priced uh, dram. Um, Glen Grant's usually, uh, I've seen a 16 do pretty well in reviews before. Not sold regularly uh, anymore as they used to be. I think they have, um, if I remember correctly, they have a. An 18 that's out there uh, quite a bit. Let me take a look and see if I can see the um, the ones that you you know run into the most. I know they have a Majors Reserve, which is the NAS, and they've got a, a 12. But the 18 I think has taken over uh, for the 16 that was regularly sold uh, a couple of years ago. Um, I think they're both pretty similar. Um, the price though on the 18 is probably a little higher than the uh, 16 of course so that's the only thing there now the 10 year i don't know what the price point is on it but i i'm i'm thinking that it's almost like a glen Gwyn 10 which is you know uh pretty mild when it comes to cost but anyway let's get back to the old bottle here um this is just an ex bourbon cask uh not a whole lot of complexity to it going on that's okay and let's see if uh it's as faint on the nose as I thought, and pretty much, unfortunately. But I have let it sit with the Glen Cairn cap uh, for the last uh, 10 minutes or so. I mean, there are some really faint pear vanilla, some straw, like some hay. Some sweetness, though. There's some um, sugar. Hmm. I mean, very light though. And I can tell by the uh, viscosity of this guy is going to be a very light looking mouthfeel. 40% um, I'm not surprised. And, um, you know, this is probably a good scotch. I'm, I'm assuming for someone that's just starting with scotch coming from bourbon and they want something, maybe put a rock in or something. I would never do that, especially with 40% whiskey, but, uh, you know teach their own and um I, i'm i would not put any water or anything below 46 that's that's kind of my own rule but just for review purposes the most of the time i will put like a drop or two just to see if i get anything note wise uh, that i might be missing out might be some cinnamon in there too it's hard to tell though maybe some spice of some sort hmm Nothing off-putting, nothing, you know, that I would consider, uh, oh gosh, you know, no soapiness, no uh, crazy floral notes that, you know, I'm not expecting, that kind of thing, at least. Hmm. Tell me what you guys are drinking, by the way. Hmm. Palette's a little better than I expected. I mean, it, it's... It's got some flavor to it, actually, for a 10-year-old. Um, this is my first Glen Grant I've ever had. Hmm. 
trying to think of which Glen Goins I've had. It's a comparable, I'd say, distillery uh, from what I know. Um, hey, Telex. I'm sorry. Hey, Tom. I'm going to call you Telex tonight. And uh, I've only had a few drinks, so I'm not, like, you know, out of it or anything. But um, thanks for stopping by. Tom, uh, Tom, what are you drinking tonight? I'm having a Glen Grant 10. I'm going to do a, a Tam Do a Bass Strength 001. Um, Glenn Grant's courtesy of Paul, and um, we uh, do some trading uh, of salsa here and there, and uh, that was one of his for this this uh, round. I've been drinking something all afternoon. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the way to do it when you get a chance to. Water, lots of water, yeah. I've been pacing myself. I've got two big glasses of water next to me, so, and they're, you know, this one I've been already sipping on, but they're big glasses, so I don't play around. <laughs> Hydration's very important. Let's go for another taste, because it, it was good. It was it was better. It is a thin mouthfeel, unfortunately. No, not a lot of oil going on, but... Well, let me know what you decide to pour. Maybe I might join you from if I do a third one or something. <laughs> Excuse me. Had pizza earlier, so... Thankfully, it's been a while, so there's no uh, destruction of the palate, but it always, you know, it hits you in the chest sometimes if, if it's got uh, Thankfully, it wasn't too saucy, so. Hmm. Hmm. White grapes and pears, that's like the first fruity notes came up. On World at 12 was interesting, almost too sweet from the Pinot Noir. Huh. I'd probably like it though, because I do like a sweet bottle. I'm gonna have to try that one red. I've heard uh, mixed reviews, but um, if, if since I do like like things on the sweeter side, I might uh, have to go with that. Give it a good try. I haven't tried a long row at all yet, actually. Um, Hazelburn was good, and of course Springbank. But um, yeah, I gotta get my hands on a on a long row. That's their heavily peated stuff, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I did like the Glen Jordan peated. Um, have, you haven't opened it yet. I think you're gonna like it, man. Um, I was I was pleasantly impressed by it, more so than a lot of these other guys trying to do peated whiskeys. Uh, wasn't really into the. Uh, I think I had a Glen Livid uh, Nadura peated cask. It was really lemony. It was almost like eating those lemon bars. It was a little little too much lemon for me. Um, Pete was okay, though, um, Tim and Tool PD Tang was horrible, did not like that at all, uh, the Unlock Flouter, that's another Pete one I, I wasn't really that into, I had to be in the mood for that kind of young, overly twangy kind of Pete deal, it's no earthiny, t there wasn't any earthiness to it, it didn't seem like it was well balanced, you know, um, but... Like Ben Rick, I've had um, a peated version of that. I think it was a 17 Sepidism, something like that. And I think that was a good one. Uh, Balvany Pete Week, that's a good one. That's a 14 year old. So sometimes you get lucky outside of Alla and Campbelltown. Uh, Long Row Red wasn't so much too sweet as the wine flavor was very strong. Almost artificial wine flavor. Interesting. You've got the two as well still not sure about it um i've had the two this is going to be the number one i'm going to be doing later tonight um and i did love the two i've heard mixed reviews on the two even though it says batch two there are different versions of it where some people have loved it and some people have been like this is not for me and the tasting notes were completely different so i don't even I'm not sure if some of the batches were mislabeled or if it's just inconsistencies across the board on that particular offering, but uh, I'm interested to see what I get out of this batch one, and hopefully, um, you know, it won't be a disappointment, because the batch two is pretty damn good. I'll go over some of the notes I got on that here in a, in a second, and um, this has got a dry mouthfeel on the finish, um, and I'm not too usually keen on that. I mean, but for an introduction whiskey, let me see what the price point is on this Glen Grant 10. I'm just curious. I, it can't be over 40 bucks. I would, I would think. I would, I would hope not, at least. If it is, man, some somebody's asking too much for their juice. But let's just give it a quick go and see what the cost is. Um, Master Malt's 
probably a pretty decent, uh, yeah, 35 before, um, taxes and shipping though. Uh, let me see if I can find a place on uh, wine searcher is a good place to find bottles. Let's do wine searcher. And, uh, if you're looking for a particular bottle, especially if you narrow it down to a particular country or a particular state, it's actually pretty good for that. Um, in particular offering, of course, with that search uh, to narrow down and they order it per price and all that good stuff. Um, let's see if we can find a Glen Grand tenant here, hopefully. Oh, as soon as I saw two ninety nine, I was like, that's got to be a sample. Of course, it's a, a 50 milliliter uh, sample. Um, but it looks like in... Wow, I don't see it regularly sold in the United States. Here we go, thirty-seven ninety-nine. Wow, it's closer to forty actually. Uh, it looks like, and that's in Massachusetts uh, slash New York, from thirty-seven to forty-one. California's forty-five, a little higher. Uh, man, I don't know, and I and it even it gets higher from there. Some places are selling this for fifty-five dollars. Too high. It's just way too high for that. I mean, for some of the $40, like Magnus uh, from Highland Park is a good $40 whiskey. Better than this. Um, Johnny Walker Black, I think, is, is, a, is a little, has a little more meat to it. I like it a little better. Um, and that's a blended, which I usually don't even do blended. So that should tell you something. Very dry, very thin. Um, hmm. It's got a little heat for 40%, but I think that's actually some from some spice in the background that's going on. It's got some white pepper notes. Um, Tom fell on some Pete Monster 10 anniversary this week. Oh, hold on one second. I shouldn't have got rid of that thing. Let me see, show life messages. I missed the end of that, but I saw that you picked up a that and a Khalil it looks like um that should be pretty good that 10th anniversary um i was uh pleasantly surprised by the hedonism that i had the other night that was good and uh, i never had a bad compass box i heard the muse was kind of iffy from lee but he's the only other one i've had i've heard you know that's had that um but he's a little more pickier than some of us here uh, i found a 10 Oh, the the Stitchel Reserve. Ooh, there we go. And picked up a bottle of the Kalila Stitchel Reserve. The Kalila is almost yeah. I I saw that available recently, and I was thinking about picking up some of that at some point. Um, I've only got uh, two Kalilas in my collection. I've had the twelve, of course, uh, numerous times. I've got the seventeen unpeated and the Mulk, which is a really good bottle. I did a review on recently. Um, that's still to reserve. I got my eye on. I'm gonna have to pick something. Did you like that one? Have you opened it up yet? Um, and uh, that uh, ten year, uh, sorry, that uh, Pete, the uh, that Pete, Mon I think you said Compass Box ten year Pete Monster tenth anniversary. That should be pretty good, I would think. Uh, I've had the Pete Monster Cast Strength and the. I'm trying to remember if I had the regular Pete Monster yet or not. I can't remember. Maybe not. But that was that was that was good. The No Name, though, I think is the best so far uh, compass box I've had. But I do like the PD or Arbeg, Kalila, Dalgawine, Kleinleash blend that they do. It's, it's very well done. Um, and the Phenomenology is uh, excellent, too. Hmm. Yeah, White Pepper. Maybe, maybe a, a, a smidgen of um, black, but mostly White Pepper. It's from 2013. Wow. Yeah, it, I was surprised I ran into it somewhere online. I'll have to find it again. I think they were asking for a pretty penny of it. I think it was like two or three hundred dollars, so it was extremely expensive. So um, it's definitely in the back burner. But um, I'm curious. I think it's an unpeated version as well. But uh, even though I wasn't big on the 17, I thought, well, maybe I should give them another chance at least. Um, 119 you got a good price on it then because I think I saw it for uh, two to three hundred I want to say at least two um, and it's probably because it is from 2013 it's an older offering uh, 
I did run into an Ardbeg called Dalton that should be here any day uh, in the next, uh, I'm thinking maybe week, hopefully. Um, got it overseas, and uh, I'm really eager to get my taste buds on that one, because that's going to be, um, this This is the second version in 2014. Uh, the first version is from 1980, which was unpeated Ardbeg. I'd love to get that, but that's extremely rare. This one from 2014 is peated, but... Uh, the Kildalton is the only one they've ever tried unpeated from Ardbeg, which is kind of cool. All right, let's get us a little bit of this uh, this Tamdu and see how that goes. Thanks so much for stopping by. Um, I really appreciate it. I know it's kind of a weird uh, off day on Saturday. People have already partied, I'm sure, pretty hard all day for the Derby. My horse didn't win, unfortunately. I... Uh, I was actually pulling for the European to have a first time uh, Derby win. Uh, Mendelssohn, I think is his name. Um, I had uh, Audible for my number two. I had uh, Vino Rosso for my number three, and I picked their favorite for four. So I did have two horses in my, uh, you know, uh, picks that did place, uh, win, place, show in the fourth. So. Uh, yeah, you ran out of things to watch. My, uh, I hear you, Tom. My, uh, I was watching The Office, uh, an old show from the mid-2005 area, and it's pretty funny. Uh, it's been years since I saw it. was probably since it's been on the air. I, I watch reruns of that sometimes. I just watched one, and I thought, you know what? It's, it's Saturday. Might as well have a freaking, you know, before the news comes on, at least have a dram or two and just shoot the stuff with you guys so nice color on this i wonder if it's uh let's see if we can do some little quick research uh no chill filtering and no and it is natural colored 58.8 baby wow that's a hot one mm. it already reminds me of that like abala or abana for the uh for a really nice, deep, spicy, sweet nose. Hmm. Holds shape well. It's definitely a better uh, mouthfeel, I can tell already, from the uh, Glen Grant 10. No comparison. This is going to be at least medium, uh, just by the way it moves in the glass. So that's good. Um... And I'll pull up uh, some notes on the, uh, let's see what I got here for the, uh, the Tamdu. I did the Tamdu 2. This will be actually interesting. I did, I, the first one I had was the Batch Strength 2. And um, I'm going to see what I, how this compares to that, how close it is or how far it is. I'll read you off my uh, thing for the 2. It was another fantastic start. The Whiskey Expo actually had it uh, when I was in Indianapolis. The nose has medium red fruit, peanuts, cinnamon, and black pepper. On the palate, there were baked biscuits, hazelnuts, chocolate, and almost a soft drink cola flavor. The finish was long, full of nutmeg, sherry, woody notes, and vanilla. Wow, easy 4.75 out of 5, 2.5 increments. You need to spend some time with this one and appreciate its complexities. Lean on the sweet, uh, it leans on the sweet end, so the theme of the dram should be Head Over Heels by Tear for Fears. I usually give a, a song um, that I think of when I'm experiencing a dram because if I want to remember the experience I had with a particular whiskey, sometimes if I think of a song, it actually triggers all the notes that I had. I know it's kind of crazy, but uh, link music to smells and tastes sometimes. It's kind of like a form of synesthesia. It's like a when you can you hear color and see taste it's it's really it's it's like you have some sort of cross connection of the senses yeah it does work in a weird way it's called syn i can't even say the word synesthesia i think is how you say it uh, kind of a cool concept to look up hmm yeah i mean I, the cinnamon is definitely the spice that you're getting so i think that's similar I'm trying to think if I'm getting the fruit. It's so hot that I might have to nose this after a tub, because uh, it's 58%, maybe after the water touches it. I did just pour a little bit of go too, so we'll have to let it air out a little bit. 
Yeah, I think the pe the pepper is definitely there too, with because it's so spicy, it's intense. So the cinnamon, black pepper makes makes sense. Hmm. Well, you just told me you should add some more to that one. Yeah, I bet he did. <laughs> I bet he did. That's that is. I'm I'm surprised that he's willing to spend. You know, he spends some crazy money on some of these uh, just like you and uh, to buy like a cast strength whiskey that's above 50 51 percent and not at least try a couple of drops of water on it to me it seems insane uh, I, I know that it's all subjective you do it how you like it but not to, not to even give it a chance with a drop of tear water it may be different if i'm begging him to throw like spoons upon spoons that would be, you know, not such a good idea. But to, you know, let let it try to have a chemical reaction on a on a smallest scale, I don't see how that could not be a winner. But you know, I play with the whiskey all kinds of ways until I find a way to enjoy it most. Yeah, same here. And I, I'm just surprised that he is, because uh, he's been around. You know, he's been around whiskey for quite a while and uh, I've never seen him put water on anything not even a drop <laughs> and uh, I just wondering if he's missing out you know I mean I'm not saying to dilute it by any means but you know putting it literally like like that much which you can barely see anything in there that is a uh, that's not going to really tame it by any means if that's what you're worried about, you know. You're not going to, like, dilute it by percentage points at all by any means, I would think. <clears throat> I mean, if it's 58, I might have taken it to 57, if, if that. I'm thinking, you know. Oh, see, and the nose is already 10 times better than it was because it, it, it was just hot, hot as hell. But, you know, he, he probably ha has, has been doing this for so long, maybe his palate has just got that ironclad, like, you know how, like, some people, they work with their hands a lot, they build calluses, they they can just go out and do whatever, and they don't even have to wear gloves, and then some people that, that, you know, they'll dabble and do a little work here and there, and, you know, they have more tender skin I guess you're gonna have to wear gloves every time you go out there and and do something so I think it's maybe it's something similar to that I, I'm, I'm just kind of guessing mmm now I'm getting the fruit that could be a little more specific some definitely some strawberries maybe some beets even some like um I mean, it's definitely some intense red fruit and a little, maybe a little vegetal. Hmm. Raspberries. Really nice sweetness in there. And thankfully, I'm pretty sure since I didn't put much on it, you know, much water on it, it the spices in the pepper and the cinnamon and all that's still going to be there on the palate. I'm... I'm I don't have it as much on the nose, but that doesn't mean it's gone on the palate, you know. Oh, that's, that's, that's nice. This is batch one, so. Oh, wow. Holy moly. Mmm, that is an intense palate, man. Oh, wow. That cola flavor is there, but it's even more intense on the first batch, I think. It's funny, because I think I got it on the back end after more time, letting it sit out for a bit. And, um, oh wow, it's a nice selection they got there, Tom. Um, 50% is good. I, I think it's pretty, 48 to 50 is my sweet spot. That's where I like to get my whiskey to. Um, I guess the same as 100 proof. Um, anyway, but... Um, the uh, this the cola is uh, that and it's like a 
bubbly burning sweetness without carbonation it's really bizarre the um pleasant though maybe even maybe even a little more like grape not like white grapes or red grapes but like purple concord grapes are in there too this is kind of reminiscent i think if if Glen Scotia 15 had a cast strength of that whiskey, what it would taste like. That's what, what this what I, I kind of get with this guy. That's amazing. I'm going to have to pour me a little more. I, I, sh I When I poured myself a little earlier, I kind of shortchanged myself, I think. I might do one, one other dram, though, before we call it a night. So I think I'll, I'll work on this a little bit, and then we'll... Do I have some classic cut? No, I wish I did. And it's funny, I had an extra bottle of Lafroig 18 recently that Lee um, had his eye on. He offered to trade me a bottle of the classic cut for it. The only issue with it is I'm not really a Macallan collector. Uh, I might end up being one after I've dabbled. I love the Rare Cast Black. It's one of my favorite whiskeys. Um, and, uh, you know, I've had a couple other ones that, that were a lot lower the... the well, the Fine Oak 21 is really damn good, too. I've had a couple of the lower-end ones, too, that were decent, like the 12, of course, and the, uh, I think I had a 15. I can't remember, though. It's been a while. I'll have to look at my notes for that, but, um, but I, st I try to stick with Isla and Campbelltown because if I expand a collection past that, I'm going to have, I've already got bottles, like, everywhere in, the, in my basement, and i, I got to kick us some control over the, uh, experience of the collecting and stuff so i gotta anyway but um uh, i do have a mccallan rare cast not the black but i do have a rare cast back there i haven't opened yet so i could try that if you've got that one tom um were you around for my last video when i went through all my samples and was asking about viewers choice did you is there anything in there that you thought might be good uh it should be around 80 dollars a bottle found it was a bit expensive yeah that's what I, I was thinking too. Um, did you have anything back here that I haven't opened yet that um, you want to, we could share a dram and see, uh, give some notes and see what we get out of it. It doesn't have to be anything particular. I don't, I don't care which one it is. It could be a high end one, low end one, whatever you feel like. If you remember what I had over there. Mm. This one is, 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 See, it's to compare though. It's tough because I I think I might like the palette of the first batch better, maybe not the finish. That's a tough. That's a tough one. Mm. Ooh, that's hot. That's good. Oh man, nice pepper. That cola, man, and and there's something else too. What is that? It's like a um, bready. It might be the baked biscuits that I explained before. There is some like sourdough. Is maybe another word, another expression. Yeah, if this the finish is there, but. I'm not getting the nuts that I got on the second one. This one definitely has the sherry. It has the vanilla. Really nice. Um, like a like a full-fledged big mouthful of cherry pie. But a good cherry pie. Oh, got a Glen Scotia uh, 15 for 57. And then a Victoria for 76. Oh, man. The Glen Scotia 15 is outstanding. That's a great price on it. That's also a great price on the Victoriana. But I have not had that yet. So... That's uh, that goes for ninety to a hundred from what I've seen around Maryland. Um, I think you said it was like uh, seventy or eighty. That's that's a good price. Um, I think the person I spoke with that had a bottle of it, he did not have it open, so I don't know if um, you know. I can't speculate if that's going to be great, but I will tell you that most people say the the Glen Scotia fifteen is the best available. He just talked about the 18. Uh, I haven't personally had it yet. Um, it is out there, and that's a great price for an 18-year-old whiskey. And if the 15 is as good as it is, I don't see how the 18 could be really, you know, any worse or any lesser of, of quality, you know. It's the same distillery doing the same thing, so... 
Uh, but you never know. I mean, some sometimes like with the Talisker 25 versus the 30 versus the um, Distillers Edition, I mean, some people don't really get into the 25 for some reason. I haven't had the privilege of trying it, but I have heard horror stories of people spending like extraordinarily high amounts of money for some of these uh, 20 plus uh, year old uh, whiskeys up to 30 even and being disappointed. So uh, the fresh rum bottles. Um, I have not had any of those, Tom. I have heard of a new line of those coming out, but um, um, there's so many spring banks to try. I still have to try the basic 15 and the basic uh, 18. I've had the 19 port. I've had the 13 green, the 12 burgundy, which I do like, even though it is a heavy cat, a wine cask, which you might not be into if you don't like the heavier wine tastings. But I loved it. I thought it tasted like a, a great uh, mouthful of New York cheesecake, man. Whew, it was great. Uh, it did not last uh, too long. <laughs> I wish I had another bottle of that. that that's going to be hard to find, I think. I, I was lucky I found one. Um, hey, Travis. Thanks for stopping by, man. I tried the, uh, the Glen Grant 10 a little earlier. Uh, you missed that, unfortunately, but uh, didn't really miss much. It was uh, it was okay. It's a little It's a little high. Which one was that? Which one was what? Um, the, uh, oh, the cheese, it's the uh, Springbank 12 Burgundy cask. That was pretty excellent. Hey, Santa, thanks for stopping by, man. Um, it, it, it's, it's hard to find. I think there's like 900 bottles, something like that. Um, I had to get mine from California, so it was, uh, quite a, quite a ways, but, um, you never know. Get, get lucky, and thanks for stopping by Loch Ness as well. Um, you might get lucky on, on doing some online looking around, and or uh, if you travel, you know, pulling in. Uh, Glen Grant 15 today, 50% new bottling. Wow. Now that would be worth a try. That would definitely be worth it. I've heard the 16 was good. You don't see the 16 very much anymore. Uh, but that might be, the, the 15 might be kind of like a replacement. If it's 50 ABV, man... That's a good, um, that, that would be definitely worth a try, because this one's only 40. It's very thin, it um, doesn't have much of a finish, it's dry. Uh, palette's decent though, but for the price, it's like 45, 50 bucks. You'd be better off getting a Highland Park Magnus, or a um, Johnny Walker Black, or a Monkey Shoulder, something like that, I think, in, in my opinion. Uh, but I'd love to try the 12, 15, 16, 18s. Uh, the higher, the better Glen Grants. It's the same thing with Glen Gwyn. I heard that Glen Gwyn 10 was, you know, nothing really, you know, much to it. But, you know, if you do get what you pay for, uh, sometimes it's better just to wait and go for the 18 or the, if you can, you know, afford the 20 something. And, you know, definitely hold on, get that. Uh, Benny's has the, oh, they do have the this Burgundy 12. Yeah, that is, uh, they might have a new offering of that because I do know that, um, they, uh, yeah, 119 a bottle is not bad at all. That's a good price for it. Um, yeah, throttle, I decided to uh, do a impromptu, uh, just, you know, share some drams with you guys while I had the time. Uh, I might go for another half hour uh, before the news comes on. And uh, I already uh, did the uh, Tamdu Batch Strength uh, Batch 1. That was pretty good. That was much better dram, of course, but... You know, like we talked about the price, you get what you pay for. And I'm sure this is a much pricier bottle. But um, like the two, I enjoyed this one a lot. Uh, I have heard inconsistencies on the uh, the batches. So, you know, if you go and get a bad, uh, you know, a, a, a not such a good offering, you might be able to talk in whoever you got it from to uh, maybe trade the bottle or something i don't know how that works i've never thankfully i've never had a, a horrible enough experience with a known uh whiskey like if i went into a, a place and i bought like an art big good doll for example something i've had tons of with then uh oh i just did a live with julia on ig oh okay um i didn't i didn't know I, and i think i'm subscribed to your channel too so i'll have to double check that because i tried not to uh to step on anybody's toes like if i see someone's doing a live i wouldn't have started so i, I didn't mean to to mess with your uh, show if that's uh, what happened but uh 
anyway, the, um, where's it going with that? I forgot. Tom's getting himself a Glasgow Scotia 15. I think I'm, I think I said so many good things about it. He's thinking maybe I should dive in. I wish I had some to have with you, Tom. Uh, that'd be nice. Oh, Instagram. Okay, gotcha. And I'm heading to Vegas tomorrow with a few friends to celebrate our 50th. Oh, congratulations, man. That would be awesome. I want you to go to Vegas, that's for sure. Um, and be off like all week next week from work. That would be perfect. <laughs> But I have to go in, unfortunately, Monday. But at least I'm off tomorrow. So let's get us a dram while we're talking here. Mm. I'm going to have to take you with me, unfortunately, because uh, I did not bring more than a couple over here. So let's go take... Whoa, sorry about that. Let's go take a look at the uh, at the bar. If you guys haven't seen yet, I've restructured my uh, setup here. I got my spring banks, I got my Benahavens, my crazy amount of the Freugen, crazy amount of Arbeg over here. And down here, I've got my Kilhomans and my Kalilas and my Bone Wars, and I've got a boatload of samples to go through. So this should be kind of fun. Um, ben, um, and those uh, offerings I went through were courtesy of uh, Mr. Paul. I really appreciate that. And... Uh, Let's see what we can what we can get into here. We got a Glen Farkless 25. Wow, that's a that's a I bet that's a damn good one. I got the McAllen Rare Cask. That's I'm sure that's damn good too. The Nakadu 15. Uh, Nakondo, I'm sorry, Nakondo 15. That might be an interesting one. I don't know anything about that distillery. Tullamore Dew. That's more of a uh, a Caribbean rum cask. I think that's more of like a a, a regular whiskey, like an Irish whiskey or something. Uh, got a Glen Elgin 12. We got a uh, old uh, particular Strathclyde 11. Uh, that must be an independent bottling Strathclyde. I've got a uh, Weller Antique, which is a bourbon. It's like a tenth or something. Uh, Winter Queen Aldelphi. Um, Westland Muscatel. That's another... Off whiskey. These are from Prane. It looks like Elsa, Elsa Bay. That's a inaugural release. This this is a uh, stiller I haven't tried yet. That might be interesting as well as Pity Vac, which is a uh, Pity Vac is a uh, dead distillery. You cannot find this stuff anymore. He spent some crazy money for this, but he was not impressed. So uh, I'm not sure if that's worth going into tonight. Macklemore, uh 43. That's another one I'm not really familiar with. Uh, grab four bottles of blend. That would be crazy, man. They're expecting me to re do reviews on these, so I gotta, I gotta do them justice. Uh, Select cast uh, travel retail for Glenfiddich. Uh, Glendronic like twenty one. We've already done that earlier. Uh, Brook Lottie Octomore seven point two. Now that would be a fun one to do if you guys are interested. Um, Talisker fifty seven North. We already did that one. Our big twenty three. I did that at the expo. Did not do a review on it yet. Excellente. Awesome. Uh, Dalmor Velour, uh, that's another one that um, I think we already did a review on that one. That was it was pretty good for travel retail, 40%. Um, McAllen 21 Fine Oak, that's fantastic, but we haven't done a review on that yet. Uh, Bunnahaven Elena Green, Batch 4. Um, this is a uh, travel retail from um, Bunnahaven that I'm itching to try. Uh, ben Dub, the uh, Black Mountain to Space Side Distillery. Uh, Bin Dubes, I think how you say Bin Dove, Bin Dove, Bin Dove, Bin Binya, I don't know. Binya Dove is going to be my, I think that's how you say that, because I know the BHs are like soft Vs, I'm pretty sure, like in Buna Haven, so be Dove, but the double N is tricky, like the Alt, when you see the, I used to call it Alta Bane, but it's Alta Vanya, so Alta Vanya would be, um, a good uh, deal there. Uh, but this might be interesting. Uh, Dahlia Wayne, 12 year. It's a, a Gordon McPhail's uh, 43%. That would be interesting. I know Compass Box uses a lot of Dahlia Wayne, a little bit in their uh, blends. Dalmore 18, good, a good one. Uh, oh, Lafroy Brodeur, port finished. Ooh. Uh, the Lot Gorm, uh, Tom, is sherry cask matured. It's very good. It's not rare at all. It's easy, easy to find. Uh, at least here, um, the lot Gorm is, is nothing outside the box, usually about 100 bucks, but it's really good whiskey. My first Kilhoman actually was this guy. 
the, the lot Gorm. Um, this guy is a uh, Seneg is more of a of um, I'd say a spicy, good mix between um, sherry and bourbon. And uh, the red wine cast mature is awesome. It's one of my favorites, but it is heavily wine cast, you know, influence. If you don't like that, you're not going to like that one. But I absolutely adore that one. And, of course, the quarter cast matured is just straight up great peatiness, uh, very well done, nutty, uh, nutty, you know, peanut brittle kind of thing going on. I am on Hangouts. Uh, that's what I'm doing the, uh, the live shows most of the time. Um, I can do uh do a show with somebody if you're if you definitely want to do it um and so i think tom asked me about my my favorite our uh, distillery yeah it's definitely a tie between lefroig and ardbeg um if i had to pick between the two i think i'm gonna have to pick ardbeg because of a main reason is the fact that on even though ardbeg you know has a lot of what you would consider NAS whiskey. A lot of these NAS whiskeys are at least 10 years old. The Ard the uh, Ardbog is a good example of it. It's it's a, I know it's a I think an 11 year old whiskey. Uh, they don't put it on the bottle for some reason, but there's nothing in that bottle that is less than 10 years old. I do know that for a fact. Um, and I think some of these other ones are the same way. Um, if, if there was anything really young in the Kelpie, I would be really surprised, as well as the Dark Cove. Um, Perpetuum and Era Verdes don't review as high um, that I've ex I've had. I haven't opened up this Era Verdes yet. I will get to do a review on that guy at some point, hopefully in the near future. But uh, these other ones are much better. Their core, um, even though the Ugadal and the Corivrican... I can't say about the NO. It probably does have some really young stuff in it. Um, these two, I'd be surprised if there was a lot of young whiskey in those because they're, they definitely don't taste anything like a young whiskey. Um, but, you know, when they don't say, it is harder to tell. Now, the, the reason why I like the Arbig better than the Lafroy to an extent was the Le Select, I think, is not a good whiskey. I wouldn't even recommend that to somebody starting whiskey uh, because it's so thin. It does, yeah, have a little peat in there, but it's it's just so so weak that anyone that likes a sort of flavor or you know a, not a good taste, I, I don't think is going to be impressed. No matter if they like peat, hate peat, whatever the you know the type is. With with these are great, like the tin, the cast strength, you can't go wrong. Uh, the quarter cask is another uh, go-to bottle. This should be on everybody's shelf here. Now, when you get to the triple wood, that's kind of a, a, a outside the box. They were trying. I know. I know they were. They were trying to like you know, get into the whole triple matured thing with um, different wood caskings. They, I know there's like two different. Uh, I think I can't remember if it's two Euro American oaks and one European, or two Euro European oaks and one. Um, one um american but either way it's it's overly woody it's almost like it's too much um this one i, I liked only when i had big mouthfuls of it i had to like really do go in hardcore drinking this guy to really appreciate i think uh what it was but it has been a long time since i've tried it so i might have to come back to that 18 is glorious i do love it but you can't buy it anymore it's not regularly available i got lucky on that one and Comora, i haven't opened yet i will do a review on this soon that's a travel retail exclusive typically you can't find it as well as these two and the carriages series are uh, once a year just like the uh, art big stuff but um i don't know I, I just think for consistently consistency and for um quality and you know i think it's hard to beat an art bag I, I wish that the 17 the 21 and the 23 were not so expensive that would be awesome but anyway so anything you guys want me to open up i'm going to do one more i think before we cut it call it a day um and i don't have a, a real preference i'm not sure if anything that i mentioned stood out to you in particular, I also got this recently, this Brook Lottie, uh, Classic Lottie, Scarlet Barley. Nothing fancy, but, uh, you know, just something to uh, 
to open up. Uh, throttle, um, I would, but I don't have a computer to use. I'm actually using my phone, and I'm not, I haven't tried to hang out over the phone before uh, open a sherry bomb. Yeah, that wouldn't be bad, because I am, I am hankering for like a, a nice, just sweet deal. That milk was good. I tried that last night. That was actually better than I expected it to be. It's a hell of a lot better than the 17-year-old unpeated, in my opinion, but... I, I just, this one was very salty, olivey to me, and I just did not get into it as much. But, you know, I can invite you on your phone, just need your email. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. Let's do, um, let's try, let's see. I've got a couple of different accounts. Uh, I don't know which one of them I'm logged into right now. Let's see. Um,. I tell you what, I, I'm not going to be actually be able to do this more than probably another uh, 15 minutes anyway. Uh, throughout. Let's, let's schedule it for next time. Write me an email because uh, this email account, I'm not sure like, which one's engaged now. This one's not even a Google one. Just write to telex at outlook.com and let me know. Uh, let's try to meet up uh, another time. But anyway, let me try to figure out... Uh, any of these stood out as being sherry bombs to you, um, uh, Travis? I was just curious of which uh, the Valor's not going to be. I mean, the Glendron of 21 I already did. That's that's definitely uh, up there. Uh, I'm trying to think. Um, that's a This uh, 7.2 Brooklady Octomore is a Shiraz cask. That would be interesting. Hey, Tosh, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, I'm still waiting for my computer, man, unfortunately. And um, you'll have to, to replay this uh, from the beginning. You missed a couple of good drams earlier. Um, I'm trying to think of which one's going to have Sherry. The McAllen Rare, I don't know. Following your IG now, I thought it was IG Instagram. Um, I haven't even really used Instagram very much. I'll have to uh, get more into that. But anyway, let me think here. Um, I did have one earlier that... I will speak uh, honorable mention that I won't do unless you guys want me to. This this Glen Turret 11 uh, from uh, Gordon McPhils actually was really good. A hell of a lot better than this guy. This guy was horrible. Uh, Strothmill 10 from Connoisseur's Choice, which is also a Gordon McPhils, which is kind of strange. But this uh, McPhils collection, Glen Turret 11, if you see this anywhere... Definitely snag it. I I like it. It's a uh, it's it's definitely good. Uh, this one's kind of middle of the road. The Glen Lossy Cast Strength 19. It was it was better a lot better than this. But this is actually the star of the three, I think. And that did that one uh, before. But anyway, let me just. I'm just gonna have to pick something, I guess. Um, I'm gonna th I'm gonna think. Let's do either the Buna Havanera Nagrain or the Brooklady Octomore 7.2. Or maybe the McCallum Fine Oak 21. Hmm, that's probably a good. Sh I don't know if I could say that Sherry Bomb since this is an older, delicate whiskey, but 7.2. Yeah, I was leaning towards that from the beginning. Like, let's go Octomore. What the hell? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> Sorry, uh, viewers watching this uh, later on. I, I am going to. Uh, the good news is, guys, um, I know some of you have been. Uh, let me put you back in the holster here. So I'm not all over the place. Anyway, <laughs> the um, let me plug you in. Hold on one second here. Don't want to run out of juice. Um, I probably got plenty, but I just like to be plugged in when I'm doing these kinds of things. I am going to be editing a lot of video. Uh, Tosh and some other guys were telling me that it might be beneficial to actually uh, to um have some shorter versions of, of reviews so i'm going to go back through the ones i've done on live shows and in future ones i haven't done i'm going to just try to record a basic seven to ten minute tops uh review of of all the bottles and uh you know do do a run through and that way when you guys are looking for particular bottles or if you just need less time which i know these can drag on this uh <laughs> banana fingers this will uh help out a lot with that so let's go ahead and pour this while we're talking here because i'm sure this is going to need to open up a little bit right interestingly i have had a 7.3 and i did not like it 
I did not like it at all. Um, and it's that Ribera del Duero cask. I know I keep talking about it every video and people probably get tired of hearing me say it, but that's the only Brook Lottie I've not liked. Everything else has been great. Um, let me go and look at, uh, thanks for just subscribing. Uh, uh, is it Louise or Louis? I think it's Louis. And uh, I hate it mispronouncing people's names, but when I don't speak Spanish or I'm not sure what where you're from, but uh, when I see that name, sometimes I'm, it throws me off when I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to pronounce that. <clears throat> Let's call you L for short. <laughs> it's like a, uh, that's Louise. Okay, Louise. Um, I keep uh, throwing myself self off, so I might just call you L. <laughs> Let's see. Better than Larry. <laughs> Octomore. Let's look up the little 7.2. This is his cask evolution. Interesting. This is, uh, I was chatting with uh, Paul, and uh, I think this also came from Paul. I mean, he's got some, this was a, a side trade. Uh, what we do is we trade particular distilleries, and um, we'll throw in an extra for the guys. And sometimes if some one of us has another bottle that, you know, they have our eye on, we might agree to like a side deal. Like, hey, you know, I know you've got this. Would you be interested in this? And if we're both like, yeah, hell yeah. And so this, I think, was a side uh, a side thing where he just mentioned that he had it. And I was like, ooh, that sounds good. Five-year-old, not not old, but for peated whiskeys, and I did see somebody talk about that earlier. They're very, they're very right. It's very true that sometimes you don't want your peat to be too old because then it gets a little too faint uh sometimes if the like the little 18 if it's done well enough though even though if the peat subsides the other flavors come up and really meld well together where you still have the peat but you also have a lot of good attic old school notes to it that you don't get on new whiskeys you just don't get them tosh can uh, appreciate that I, he uh is local to me he came over and i uh, offered some Lefroy 18 to him and he was like yeah this is like the star of the show right here this is the best thing i've tasted all night and i've i was offering him just about everything i had so i think that uh it goes to show that uh the old pete stuff is still damn good too but anyway this is a merge of uh american oak and former french Rhone syrah wine barrels Oh, he says Shiraz. Is, is that the same thing? I would think it would be, I guess, if it's Syrah, Shiraz. It's a similar wording. Uh, I'm not a master of wine. I have had Shiraz wine before, and uh, it's a red wine. I do like it, but uh, it's not overly dry, but it's not overly like fruity and, and sweet either. It's kind of a good middle-of-the-road Um to me at least i'll have to um see if um i don't know i just hope that the that if i put a little bit of water on it which i will since it's 58.5 sorry lee um that it will still be oh we'll try it neat though just you know to give it a a deal but it's going to be hot i know just by my experience with with octomores Oh, wow. That is a nice nose. Wow, it's not what I expected. I thought it was going to have more of a, a red wine cask, uh, you know, like a burgundy kind of a nose to it, but it doesn't at all. Hmm. It's probably because it's a marriage of different whiskeys that are also from oak and barrels. Um, not just the uh, heavily, you know, matured in a wine cask so I feel like brown sugar was like the first note and that's strange to me for an octomore got some really nice maple syrup hmm not it's not sweet though it's weird it's like more spicy than sweet definitely some cinnamon nutmeg Maybe some ham, and that might be from the peat, like a real, like, not like 
I'm trying to think, uh, not a Virginia hen, but like a real thick, um, maybe leaning more towards a, like a sausage, like a kielbasa or something. Wow. That is pretty good. And I'm surprised I can dig that out with it being as hot without any water added to it. That's, uh, that tells me that it's, it's blended really well, you know, as far as the way they got all the flavors married in there. Bacon. The candied. I have a feeling this might be good. I do love the 7.1. That was my favorite Octomore I've had so far. Um, this, uh, by far, compared to the 7.3. This is going to be nice. This, this will mean I've had the, the regular 7.1, 7.2, and 7.3. I'll have to try some of the other ones, though. Wow. That'll wake you up. <laughs> wow, that's good, though. Much better than the 7.3. Wow, I wish I knew what it was about that 7.3. It's like a, a chalky finish. Just hated it. But this, this is mouth-watering. This is not so dry. This is just as much flavor, just as much strength. But, Wow. This definitely needs a little water. We're going to have a, another pour of this because this is damn good. I'm sorry, guys. Let me how to get my uh, little bottle out here. <laughs> this is good enough to be like, ooh, this, 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 we need a little bit more of that. Thanks for the thumbs up, too, by the way. Um, all the thumbs up, all the, um, if you can comment, if you, if I do a review and you've got some, some of your own notes you'd like to say, go ahead and, and comment. I don't mind. Um, it's good to, to hear what other people think or what they get out of these uh, things. And um, the thumbs up are great, so uh, keep those going. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Oh, my. Okay, we're going to get our little dropper out here and uh, see how that goes. And I apologize for being all over the place, but I'm still, until I get that new computer back, it's going to be like uh, Frankenstein trying to, uh, you know move on the couch here back and forth yep the mom the dropper that mom got me i love this thing it's it's much better than a spoon that's for sure makes me feel a little more professional <laughs> even though i don't get paid <laughs> i just gotta remember no whiskey or water around the, the computers anymore no more that was the huge biggest mistake i made never again Nice color. It's not, and, and you can tell it's not faked. It's not like, you know, it's not got a, a crazy amount of E150A on it. It's, it's, it, it's got to be just natural from the cask because it's, you know. Oh, okay. I'll join, join a stream. That's cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm only going to do a few more minutes here, guys. I'm going to wrap it up here shortly. And, um, and, but I would like to do a stream with you, uh, Throttle. It's not that. It's just real tough when I'm using the phone. And I didn't even know which, which drink I was going to pour. And I felt like I was running out of time and all that stuff. You know how that goes. But we'll definitely schedule something. Because I, I do need to sit down and, and have um, a show with somebody else. I've mentioned it to Lee and Paul. I'm not sure uh, schedule-wise when they can do it. It's hard to get people to be on the same frequency, same schedule as you sometimes. But... I might just weekly throw it out there. Uh, this is French Syrah. It's S-Y-R-A-H. Now, my question to you is, is that the same as Shiraz? S-H-I-R-A-Z. I'm thinking that's the Arabic name of the same thing because I know like in Morocco, uh, which is a French Arabic country, uh, colonized by the French, originally Arabic, I think is how that happened. Um that they might change the spelling of it. French Syrah does sound like it would be, in Arabic, would be Shiraz, but I'm just guessing. I don't, I'm not a wine expert by any means. I'm, I am learning a lot of, about wine as I travel through the whiskey knowledge and, and study up, and I, it seems like I'm learning more about wine cask, which is great, so. Yeah, where is Eric when you need him? That's true. He'd probably be, he'd probably have the answer like, pow, there you go. 
uh, I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm going to float a, a good hypothesis that it's the same as a Shiraz, but watch me be off. This is 208 ppm, by the way. Um, it's on the higher side. Uh, bottle at 58.5 percent, uh, and this is from the Rhone Valley R H O N E. Um, and fantastic. Excuse me, one second. Fantastic nose. Neat and with a little water on it. Water doesn't kill it. Same properties, though. I'm not getting anything extra. Might just be a little more subtle. Sometimes getting a side side nose in there gives me a, a well more well rounded something I might miss. Might just be getting a little more of the brine, a little bit more of the um, of the um, maritime aspects out of the of adding a little bit more water to it. Can really get some more of the different characteristics. Thanks, Whiskey Throttle. Well done. Oh, my. Nice, nice fruit. That peat marries really well with the fruit here. It's it's still a little hot, but 58.5, what do you expect? I'm not, not bitching by any means. Um, really great barbecue, but really heavy fruit. It's almost like if you had a really great steak... Yeah, and the 15 is really good, Tom. I told you, man, it's got that nice... I got a lot of real deep purple grapes out of that one. Um, some Maybe even some cola properties to it. Um, and look at my review on Distiller when you get a chance, if you had a similar experience. But I really like that one a lot, man. I'm going to have to get me a bottle of that myself. I don't have any bottles of Glen Scotia yet. I've had a couple um, of... Uh, a du the double cast is really good, too, for the cheaper version. Uh, it's not an age statement, but it's still good whiskey, and it's like 40 bucks. Um, anyway, but uh, I need to get some of their bottles, because the samples I've had, the album have been, good, been pretty good. And I'm going to have to pick me up a little. I'm, uh, that 7.3 threw me off of Octomore right away, but I can tell that uh, hmm, the nose is getting a little strange. Maybe some celery. Not bad, but just uh, it's just kind of funny. I came in for a nose and was going like, "What is that?" There's a lot going on on this though. It's 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 complicated, and I probably should give it a lot more time uh, to really, you know, do a proper proper review on it. But it's uh, it's an easy four point five to four four point seven five, no joke. Mm. The Glen Grant ten. Hate to say it, but like a 2.5. Not bad, but not, you know, outstanding. Um, and the Tandu uh, Bad Strength 1, I think, was about a 4.5. That was, that was darn good, too. This might edge it out. This might be a 4.75 because it's 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 so almost perfect. It's, I've got my Pete. I don't need a lot of age, but I do have a 5-year-old sort of statement on it. I've got the 58.5 bottling strength. I, I, I doubt there's any coloring on it, I, and there's, why would you chill filter something, you know, like that? Hey, Rabbit, thanks for stopping by, man. Glenn Grant, 15 best strength is quite nice. I'm going to have to find me some of that, Tom. That's, I'm glad you gave me a heads up for that, because I'll have to keep my eye out on it. Uh, at least to give it a try, maybe. Hmm. Before we go, finish. Wow. Thank goodness this is not dry. Um, the finish is, it goes on for a while. It's a uh, mouth watering still. It's a good mouth coat. I'd say medium. Maybe not as thick, and that's the only thing. Uh, I'm alive if you change your mind. Okay. Um, and um, the, um, the sweetness is still there, but. There's some savory magic there too. I think the peat is um, after it lingers, it gets a little more earthier at the end, which to me is good. 
that's my only iffy thing about the 7.1 was that Pete's great, but it's such a strong pow in the face. Didn't really have a lot of earthiness to it like a Lagavulin 16 would. This has more of that earthiness to it to me. I'm not sure if it's the influence from the Shiraz cast that helps that out, but uh, oh, you oh you got you, you uh, got a bottle. Very cool, man. I am excited. I've got I've got one too. So we're gonna have to do a, a joint review somehow with that, if you don't mind. Uh, or maybe I'll. Uh... No, actually, I have a bottle too. It's it's funny because uh, when I had a bottle of. Um, what was it? The Our Big Grooves. Uh, Lee had the Chronic Vona there, and I'm like, well, you didn't open that yet. I haven't opened my grooves. I had an extra, so I thought, I'll trade, you know, I'll trade you for that since he's been really gracious. Uh, so it didn't need to be like an equal trade. He's, he's, he's helped me out with a lot of good samples. So I thought, and eh, I can do that. So. I do have a nice bottle, so we'll have to do a joint review. We'll have to try to do a Google Hangout or something, maybe see how that goes. And uh, uh, throttles coming up next. Uh, definitely give them a, a join. Um, I might. I'm, I'm debating. I might watch the news first. Um, I've been kind of out of the uh, not watching news, and I missed the uh, hockey game earlier. I, maybe I shouldn't watch the news because I want to watch the hockey game too. So. It's kind of a tough decision, but either way, go join Whiskey Throttle's deal. He's coming on now, and uh, Slanchify, everybody. And if, if, if I change my mind, I'll, I'll join you guys on his channel as well. Have a good one for now. Have a quick before your stream. Yeah, I, I need to, too. Cheers, Tom.